Welcome to section 12 of Parasites. This is our parasite overview figure. In the next several videos, we'll be discussing nematodes. You can see them right here. And you should also know that these are known as roundworms. From the diagram, you should know that nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes are all considered worms, or helminths. So you may hear us refer to these bugs generally as helminths. Okay, in this video, we'll be discussing Enterobius vermicularis, or pinworm which you can see right here. As you can see, the classification of some parasites can be challenging to memorize because there are two names for the general category of the parasite as well as the specific organism. However, our image mnemonic should make each name easy to remember, and if you ever get confused, just refer back to this overview chart. Okay, this scene will take place inside of a game room with a pinball machine. Pinball sounds like pinworm, so this pinball machine should help you remember that this image is all about pinworm. Now notice that we've added several animals to the scene, including foxes and mice. These animals are considered vermin, which are animals that are harmful to crops and may cause disease. Vermin sounds like vermicularis, so this room infested with vermin should help you remember that pinworm is also known as Enterobius vermicularis. Because this is a game room, we've also shown a small toy merry-go-round. This will be our recurring symbol for the broad category of parasites known as roundworms, or nematodes. So, merry-go-round for a roundworm. All right, notice that we've added two kids to the scene. One of them is clearly a bully, giving this poor kid in the yellow shirt a massive wedgie, which will certainly cause him some anal discomfort. In any case, the wedgie should help you remember that pinworm causes anal pruritus. Fortunately, the kid that's getting picked on has gotten some form of justice. Just prior to this act of mischief, the kid in the yellow shirt had stepped in some poop. As the bullies lifted him into the air, he began violently kicking his legs around, and some of that poop happened to flick off off the bottom of his shoe and landed in the other bully's face. Ah, justice is served. In any case, this is our recurring symbol for the fecal oral transmission, which should help you remember that pinworm exhibits fecal oral transmission. These bullies were picking on him in the first place because they wanted the pinball machine all to themselves. You can see that the bully in the green shirt is pretty excited about using this pinball machine, and he doesn't even care that it has a piece of tape on it that says, out of order. We can see him ripping the tape right off of the machine with complete disregard. If we zoom up, you can see that as he's pulling the tape off, there are little white spots left behind on the machine. The tape and white spots are here to help you remember that pinworm is diagnosed by viewing pinworm eggs under the microscope following a tape test. The test is performed by placing an adhesive plastic material against several areas of the perianal region and then transferring this material to a glass slide, which can then be viewed under a microscope. This is an image of a pinworm egg right here. So viewing this under the microscope following a tape test would be diagnostic of a pinworm infection. All right, let's wrap this video up by discussing treatment. To continue with this bully theme, notice that we've shown another bully burning the homework of the kid in the yellow shirt. This bully is clearly a pyro, and his fuel of choice is the nonstick PAM spray. Anyway, the word pyro and PAM sound like pyrantal pamoate, and should help you remember that pinworm can be treated with pyrantal pamoate. An alternative medication is a bendazole, such as albendazole or mebendazole. To help you remember this, we've shown the final bully who appears to have taken the poor kid's phone and is bending it. Bend sounds like bendazole, so the phone getting bent will be our recurring symbol for bendazole. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A five-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his concerned mother who states that he is constantly scratching his butt. The mother first noticed this habit several weeks ago after her son began attending kindergarten. Physical examination reveals erythema surrounding the perianal region. An adhesive tape is placed in the perianal region and transferred to a glass slide. The slide is viewed under light microscopy and reveals the presence of eggs. This patient's condition is best treated with which of the following medications? A. Ivermectin B. Diethylcarbamazine C. Pyrantal pamoate D. Praziquantel or E. Doxycycline Okay, let's go through a couple key points. First, the boy has been constantly scratching his butt, and this began after he started attending kindergarten. Also, an adhesive tape placed in the perianal region revealed the presence of eggs when viewed under light microscopy. Collectively, these findings are diagnostic for pinworm, and the treatment for this parasitic infection is pyrantal pamoate. So the correct answer is C. From the image, recall that the pyro boy with PAM spray right here is here to help you remember that pinworm can be treated with pyrantal pamoate. The other answer choices are antiparasitic medications, but none of them are used to treat pinworm. Remember, pinworm can be treated with bendazoles or pyrantal pamoate. So the correct answer is C. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about pinworm.